everyone and in today's video for management accounting we will be doing the weighted average cost of capital or as com more commonly known the WAC. We're going to be doing a question and a solution but as always let's start off with the definition. The weighted average cost of capital or the WAC is a calculation of a firm's cost of capital in which each category of capital is proportionally weighted. All sources of capital, including common stock, preferred stock, bonds, and any other long-term debt, are included in a WAC calculation. The WAC represents the company's required return for investment and incorporates finance from shareholders' equity and debt providers' debt. The WAC means that a company has taken the decision to finance the business operations using both equity and debt. Sources of finance Sources of equity finance, the cost of equity, include issued share capital, distributable reserves, non-distributable reserves, retained income, and any form of debt that has a conversion option to ordinary shares. Sources of loan finance, cost of debt, include debentures, long-term loans, lease finance, preference shares, mortgage bonds, and any form of long-term finance that does not have an option to convert to ordinary shares. And finally, the WAC formula. As you can see, E represents the market value of equity, D represents the market value of debt, RE is the cost of equity, RD is the cost of debt, and T is the tax rate. Okay, let's begin with our example. Cake Limited is contemplating investing in an industrial dough mixer to manufacture a new biscuit line. The details are as follows. The investment required will be 2 million rand. The life of the project is 3 years and at the end of the 3 years the asset will be sold for 800,000 rand. That's the disposable value. The year 1 cash flow after tax will equal 600,000 rand. Year 2 cash flow after tax will equal 450,000 Rand. Year 3 cash flow after tax will equal 400,000 Rand. The company is currently financed equally, 50% by debt and 50% by equity. The cost of equity is 15% and the cost of debt is 12% after tax. In this example, we're not specifically working out the cost of equity and the cost of debt. I'm going to do that in a more comprehensive video. This video is just more about the actual WAC calculation. Let's read the required. Required, calculate the WAC, and we're also going to evaluate whether the company should invest in the asset. That's mainly what the WAC is used for. So, along with the calculation of the WAC, we are also going to be figuring out if the investment is worth it. Let's get into the calculation. Alright, so that 50% that they were talking about that shared between the debt and the equity, that is actually that E over D plus E. So that's what we're going to do for that. Then we're going to times that by the 15% which is the RE or KE or whatever you want to call it. Then we're going to add it to that other 50% which is the D over the D plus the E. We're going to times that with the 12%, which is the cost of debt after tax. So that formula, the 1 minus the T, isn't applicable in this scenario because we already have the cost of debt after tax. Like I said, this is a very simple calculation in terms of the WAC. I will be doing a more comprehensive example. So 50% times 15% will give us 7.5% and add that to 50% times 12%, which will give us 6%. So that's 6% plus 7.5%, that'll give us a total of 13.5%. That will be our WAC. So keep that figure in mind, we will be using it to answer the next question. Okay, so we're going to be looking if the investment is worth it. So is the investment of 2 million Rand in this asset, this dough mixer, is it going to be worth it? All right. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using the WAC as the present value factor. Year naught, that is the investment. All right. 
at 2 million rand that is we're just going to times it by one because it's year zero the present value factor doesn't come into account yet and we're going to be putting that as a negative because as an investment that's the money we're putting in it's not the money we're making from the assets okay year one they told us our cash flow was 600,000 rand okay that's a positive and what we need to be doing is we need to times it by the present value factor so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be saying 1 divided by 1 plus 0 0.135 to the power of 1 because this is year 1 and that'll give us a total of 0 0.881 and we will times that against the 600,000 rand and that will give us the value of cash flow that we made for year 1. As you can see, I've repeated this for year two and year three, except for year two we do to the power of two and year three we do to the power of three. As you may have noticed, the end amount, which is the disposal value of 800,000 Rand, I have times that as well by the 0 0.6839, which is the one divided by 1.135 to the power of 3 because the disposal amount is also within year 3. So that's what we're doing and that'll give us a disposal amount of 547,120 Rand. Okay and all that's left to do is total up. Obviously the investment amount has to be a negative, it's our initial investment, so that 2 million Rand will be negative plus the 528,660 from the first year plus 349,335 Rand from the second year plus 273,560 Rand from the third year and plus the disposal amount of 547,120 Rand. This will give us a total of a negative 301,325. Okay, so now that we have that amount, let's jump over to the conclusion. Okay, and the conclusion is as follows. The investment does not yield a sufficient return to cover the debt repayment as well as the dividend payments required and should therefore not be accepted. This is clear since the NPV is negative. Okay, and that's it for this example. I will be doing more comprehensive examples in the future. This was just a simple equation just to get you started on the WAC and obviously the NPV. And thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you for the next video.